the largest demographic cohort in terms of a voting bloc in America was, guess who? Single Americans. Interesting. They're no the ones one that get thinks up. of singles as a cohort right, or right. a voting bloc. And they are. That's the largest cohort. Just think about what happened over the last few decades. And you get the sense that the corporatocracy and the government, and this goes for other corporatocracies in other countries and other governments around the world as well, but we'll talk about ours mostly, of course, does not like the idea of couples. Let's talk some real estate, buddy. How, how are things going in your neck of the woods? What's going on in the world? How are we, um, yeah. how are we looking in the United States real, real estate right now? Well, family? you know, a lot of stuff is going on. Like you said, it's crazy. Interest rates are climbing. Mortgage rates are climbing. Interest rates and mortgage rates are not necessarily the same thing. That's why I said that separately. You know, we are in a position where everybody thinks, oh, the market's on the verge of a crash. Oh, and yeah, sky's I falling. would welcome a market cool down. Believe me, people. <laughs> You know, sometimes I'm I'm talking to the group here or, you know, I'm doing a YouTube video or something and people say in the comments, well, you're just hyping up real estate because you're in the business. No, let me give you a clue. I hate this market. This market <laughs> sucks. OK, we do not like market like markets like this. It's very hard to operate in a market like this. There's no inventory. Yeah. Everybody's upset that they can't buy enough properties. It's this is not the best market for us. We do not make the most money in this type of market. Did I make that clear? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's uh, yeah, it's like it's like supply chain problems. It's like you have your own, your own you have supply, chain, supply chain, problems. chain problems. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, for sure. You've probably heard me talk about this on the podcast. And it is the idea that is not talked about very much. So first off, a couple things. So I remember learning about maybe five presidential elections ago, like 20 years ago, okay? Mm -hmm. That the largest demographic cohort in terms of a voting bloc in America was, guess who? Single Americans. Interesting. No the ones one get thinks up. of singles as a cohort right, or right. a voting bloc. And they are, that's the largest cohort. Just think about what happened over the last few decades. And you get the sense that the corporatocracy and the government, and this goes for other corporatocracies in other countries and other governments around the world as well, but we'll talk about ours mostly, of course, does not like the idea of couples. Oh, yeah, sure. Now, why do you say that's true? That's interesting that you say that, that you just instantly had that reaction. Did you hear me talk about it before or is this? I, I haven't, but I take it from the kind of the Malthusian mindset, um, the central planner approach and the deconstructing of the nuclear family. Yep. And I feel like they, as uh, the more divisive that they can become, the easier it is to, to corral and control. So that, that's, that was, that's kind of my approach to it. Yeah, well, that's definitely part of it. Because if you think about it, when someone is single, you know, they live in a world where they're less sure of themselves and less sure of things. When you've got another person to confide in, to have pillow talk with, you know, it really offers you a backstop of strength. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. And even better, when you have a whole family to do that with, you have even more strength. So you're much less likely to be willing to let the government kick you around. Good point. Okay. Yeah. And you're much less likely also to be financially unstable. Mm -hmm. And you're much less likely to consider needing to depend on the government or actually needing to depend on the government. Okay. So with all that said, let's look at the advantages to the corporatocracy and to government if they break up the family. Mm -hmm. And they have made a big effort to do this over the years. So think about the corporatocracy for a minute. I don't know if you ever heard the name Edward Bernays, but Edward Bernays was pretty much the founder of modern public relations and modern advertising. 
And Bernays basically organized during, I, I believe it was a Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade in the 20s, hmm. okay, a long time ago, a mm -hmm. uh, hundred years ago. And he organized to where there were a bunch of women in the parade. And back at the time, it was not considered socially acceptable for women to smoke. That was frowned upon. Sure. Sure. To oh. smoke cigarettes. And of course, the tobacco companies were losing half the market. So they didn't like that very much. They thought if we can get women to smoke the cancer sticks, then we could double our market share. So Edward Bernays, working for them, organized during this parade a time during the parade when all the women walking through the parade would pull out cigarettes. <laughs> And he also dubbed them, he gave them a name, Torches of Freedom. Oh, no. That's okay. Great. <laughs> and remember, this was not too distant from the time the first wave of feminism was going sure. on. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And as I've always said, feminism was a conspiracy to lower the birth rate of educated, uh, mostly white people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has succeeded beyond probably anybody's expectation. It's been an incredible success, but I don't mean that in a good way. Okay. <laughs> but a success nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. And so think about as we go through the years, what happened, right? Lyndon Johnson had his great society. Well, good, let's go back to the twenties. First, we had the roaring twenties and the flappers and the short mm -hmm. skirts, and that was a whole big movement. Right. And Looked like a lot of fun. I wish I could. Yeah, have been there. yeah. Um, you know, good times. And then we had, as the '60s ethic came in, we had birth control. We had another wave of feminism, and we had aid to families with dependent children program mm. come out of that. Right? Maybe I don't know exactly when that started, but you know, it kind of grew out of that era, nonetheless. And so, basically, what you had here is you had all these movements against the traditional family. Mm -hmm. After all, Gloria Steinem, the founder of the second wave feminist movement said, a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle, right? <laughs> and so there was this big move to split families up or to keep people from marrying in the first place. And if you think about it, you know, if you're single, mm -hmm. you got to have your own coffee maker and your own blender and your own toaster Two of everything. In your own bed and your own sofa and everything is double. If you're yeah. married, you're just going to share all this stuff. I mean, you know, Oh yeah. You don't need two coffee makers just because you're married. You just have sure. one for the household, one refrigerator, right? will do the job. And so if the corporations wanted to double their market share, the best way they could do that was to do product placement yeah. in movies and television and even product placement within ads mm -hmm. uh, sort of create this whole narrative of, and you know, you might know about the movie from the past. I, I don't know what year it was exactly, but it was called Kramer versus Kramer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was about a, you know, an ugly divorce and all this kind of stuff, right? If you want to double your market share and you're a, a consumer goods company, you got to get people to either stay single and never get married or you got to get them divorced as quickly as possible. No doubt. Yeah. So through the media, through literature, through music, music especially, that's the most powerful of all. And sure. yesterday's vile, base, disgusting halftime show, I, th I think was a really good example of this. Versus if you look at halftime shows from the past, and you look at just music from the past, mm -hmm. can you imagine music from the 70s versus what we saw yesterday? I don't know. I didn't see it, but I can imagine what was oh, going on yesterday. It was vile. It was, yeah. it was just pathetic. And, yeah. and during the seventies, the music was men professing their love to women. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was the singer songwriter movement, that mm -hmm. whole genre. You know, mm -hmm. one of the Rothschilds said, let me control the money and I care not who makes the laws. Yeah. Well, my saying is let me control the music. And I care not who controls the money or makes the laws mm -hmm. because the music is the most powerful revolutionary thing. We've just seen throughout history, music changes the world. And so it's really something. So we got the corporatocracy that wants to sell twice as many products and double their market share. But what about the government? I oh, mean, yeah. you got all these housewives sitting at home in the fifties. You can't tax them. I was just going to bring that up, man. This, uh, 
you so, have a so tax base you, that you, you can want to put them into the workforce <clears throat> so you can tax them. And, you know, women and the feminists will say to you, well, you know, it was just not right for women to be under the control of men and, you know, dependent on men. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Now you're either dependent on government or you're dependent on some faceless evil corporation. And right. guess what? Now the women are dying of all the same stress-related diseases that men have suffered for forever, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're working so hard. You know, you've got these women climbing the corporate ladder. They're working 70 hours a week. You don't think you're slaves? Oh, slaves. that's so, so <laughs> much better than having to make dinner. I mean, right. you know, it, it's just, yeah. it is unbelievable how quickly people forget to compare history. The question is, compared to what? Ask yourself, compared to what? Do you think that modern career woman is happier than a housewife? Oh. For some, sure, they are. And they should be able to do whatever they want. And everybody should, listen, I'm a libertarian. I believe in freedom as the, like the ultimate value, okay? But <laughs> this is not freedom. Working 80 hours a week for some big, disgusting, greedy corporation that'll lay you off without even considering you whatsoever as a person. You're a cog in a machine. You are a Man. slave to a corporation. You're a slave to a student loan. And if not, you're a slave to government. It's funny you bring that up because because yeah. uh, my wife, for example, works for a corporation and she works six days a week, 10 hours plus a day. And in order to take today off, she had to work yesterday, full day, Sunday. <laughs> Think about oh, that, man. you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right on the money, man. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just... It's uh, it's it's sad to see how 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 society and uh, our civilization has has morphed in this direction, and it looks like it's going to continue down that path. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, and, and unless unless we just kind of snap out of it and wake up, you know, um, and and, and take the bull by the horns again, it's just going to continue down this 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 path. And it's it's really sad. And you bring up something really interesting about the family unit, and not all of us. Um, and by are, the way, I should disclose, I'm single. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've yeah. never been married. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you're, you're a good case in point. And I imagine if, if, if you could dream up a, a big, gigantic, glorious family, that's super happy and you got love, lots of children and then you got multi-generations uh, worth the, the kids in, inside the family that you have a very strong support system. It's going to be great for your mental health. It's going to be great for everything. That's a true enriching life. And um, I don't have that. I mean, I gotta, I gotta, screwed up family. And, um, I have, I don't know about, about you, Jason, but, but, you know, I, I admire the folks that actually, the, 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 the folks that are actually those, those family names that actually made it through and continue to this day. And, you know, they have actual family reunions and people show up and there's a hundred people there. <laughs> you know, I couldn't get 10 people to show up to my family yeah. reunion. Oh yeah. If well, I, I tried, you know, free, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so we're all, you know, we, we're doing the best we can with what we got, but it's yeah. the, the obvious trend. It's the obvious trend and it's, it's really unfortunate. Gene, Gene, you know, everything you say, just you hit it on the nose. And if, if I can make a suggestion that if people follow my work, they've heard me say this on the podcast a zillion times on the Creating Wealth Show. It is imperative. It is imperative that you have a perspective, a yeah. sense of history. And one easy way to get this, although it's not perfectly accurate, I don't want to hear, do you think that's really a representation? It's better than anything else you've got. Okay, yeah. just watch old movies, old TV shows, listen to old music, read old books. Yeah. Okay, you got to get, and I, when I say old, I mean 1970. Okay, yeah, that old. 1950, <laughs> 1960. I'm not talking like this is within the lifetime of people yeah. alive today. Yeah. I, I'm not saying you have to read stuff from 1800s. Okay, you know, just just read stuff from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And I'll tell you, the peak of civilization was 1990. That's when everything started to go downhill mm. about 32 years ago, because that's when the music really changed. And if you think about what happened in 1990, that's when the rap, hip hop and the Seattle grunge music with Kurt Cobain, mm. et cetera, really got hold. OK. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. I'm not saying all this music is bad. I mean, I enjoy listening to some of this stuff, too. I like sure. modern music. I mean, Avicii, uh, who died a few years back, is one of my favorite modern artists. I mean, he's mm -hmm. like the Mozart of our era. OK, so I'm not like 
a prude. I'm not some stodgy grandpa here. <laughs> you know, I'm just being realistic. Like sure. our life and liberty is being taken from us left and right. The culture war we have lost the culture war. I, I guess you could say, though, you know, with, with respect to the music stuff, it, it that intends to be because, you know, that art, it tends to manifest as a byproduct of those those lifestyles, those those artists and how they were raised and yeah. that manifests. And then it sure. gets embraced because it's got a good, you know, it's got a good baseline or something, yeah. you know, well, it's got uh, a good formula. Music is yeah. so hypnotic. Sure. They, they've learned how to trick our minds yeah. into just the the rhythm of the music it's, it's just hypnotic right it can sure. suck anybody in any type of music can yeah so, yeah go ahead yeah but uh yeah uh uh you know it's all a byproduct of just i you know it's just a byproduct of of society and how society has kind of embraced a lot of um unfortunately i want to say anti anti family um yeah. ideals you know yeah. you know, it just is what it is yeah. um, well, but, remember hillary clinton wrote a book it takes a village OK, and I remember when Bob Dole was giving a speech at one of the Republican conventions, he says, I have news for Hillary Clinton. It doesn't take a village. It takes a family to yeah. raise a child. OK, that's yeah. what it really takes. I'm not sure saying too. we're all part of it. Of course, there is a village, a global village, and we're all part of it. Sure. But, you know, that that's communism. OK, yeah, yeah. That, that's what they do. The state is more powerful than the family. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's a recipe for disaster. We all know. Yeah. It. Thank you.